podcast. And we're live. Let me know you're here. Thanks so much. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming to Performance Ready. This is the third workshop in our New Zealand Music Month workshop series, sponsored by Creative Northland and Ward's Music Works. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Performance ready. What does it take to be ready to perform on stage? How do you take a song from starting out to giving a full performance that you're confident in? Um, actually, let's shut that door. Yeah. Just a little bit of. Thank you. Thank you for that. Good. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit washed out today. It's something with the lighting and the. Anyway, you can hear me. It's fine. Um, all right, so a lot of the terms that I'm going to use today are terms that I've developed in my own teaching practice, so they're not terms that are um, institutionalized terms, but uh, they will be useful points of, of reference. Um, a lot of music is just that. Similar to singing, it's something that's happening on the inside of your body, so we have to find these we have to find language to discuss it, right? And so music is, is, as a whole is, is kind of like that. Um, you don't need to know music theory or any of those things to understand these terms and these things that we're going to talk about today, okay? All right, so the first term I want to introduce us to is the phases of song development, all right? So... Uh, if you've got a, a phone or a way to take notes, I'll also be sending this stuff out. Feel free to, to write these things down. Um, and if you want me to send them to you, then send me your email. So you're just going to PM it to me or you'll write it down on that sheet over there. All right. So our first term is phases of song development. All right. And so the first phase of song development, there's three phases. First of all, the first phase is melody. Melody is what you are doing, right? It is pitch plus rhythm, right? Singing, playing the right notes at the right times, right? So pitch plus rhythm, right? Phase two is execution. This is how you are doing the things, right? So anything physical you need to do to optimize or stop doing to hinder yourself, All right? So for those of you who attended our singing workshop, if you're holding tension in the wrong part of your body, it, or in a part of your body, that is something to stop doing, to stop hindering yourself, right? Or something to start doing might be supporting from your diaphragm, All right? Or lifting your soft palate, making those adjustments, All right? So this all falls under execution. Phase three is interpretation. This is why you are making music, right? This is how you connect to the music and how you choose to convey that to the audience. Now you need to have all three of these in place in order to deliver a good performance, all right? So let's just do a little thought experiment. What does it sound like if you've got someone who's got, when well, someone's performing, they've got phases one and two on lock. Melody and execution are great, but they've got no apparent phase three, no apparent interpretation, no apparent connection to the text. What is that performance going to be like? Kind of cold and disjointed. Bo boring too much. Cold and disjointed, boring. Flat. Flat. Like soul. Yeah, it's lacking soul. And authentic. Inauthentic. Yeah. Lacking deep. Lacking depth. Yeah, it's like when you listen to a computer doing something, it's doing what you programmed into it, but it mightn't necessarily have, it might be technically perfect, but it's just missing something fundamental about music, something human. No musicality. Yeah, lacking musicality. You can even program in crescendo and decrescendo and all these kinds of musical things, and it, if it's not delivered with... A, you, have you heard things that are too perfect? We can yeah. tell when things are too perfect. Yeah. We don't like that. Yeah? It lacks a humanness and an authenticity. Okay, good. Second thought experiment. The opposite. What is someone who's all phase three, all interpretation, all feeling, and no phases one or two? What's that performance like? Uh, a bit boring. It's a mess. Maybe boring. 
I personally think these are the best. I, this is entertaining. This is entertaining. Yeah, not boring. This no. is your favorite karaoke performer, mm. right? This is the one on karaoke who is not singing in tune. They're not singing the at the right time. They're just, but they're so they're going for it. Yeah, I I love this. this is, yeah, this is my favorite karaoke performer. But I'm also not paying to go watch them and I'm also it's it's not what most of us are shooting for you know outside of that particular context it could be a really good if it was intent yeah good comedy good comedy all right so where most people fall is they've got most performers fall is they've got phases one and three fairly well figured out and they don't have the phase two stuff figured out this is what it sounds like when someone's just, it's not quite right, but you can't put your finger on it, right? They're singing the right notes. They're singing them at the right time. They're clearly feeling it, but it's not coming across to you as the listener, all right? And what we want is a TV or like a movie ready type performance. And what I mean by that is, when you're watching a movie and you forget that you're watching a movie, you're just so absorbed in it. Have you ever watched a, a live performer like that? You're just so absorbed in it. And because it's live, it's even next level, right? It's even, it's even more so than you can get watching something on a screen. Um, to compare that with where, where most people are kind of operating at, um, imagine you're watching Nothing against community theater. I love community theater. But imagine you're watching community theater and the whole time you're like, this is pretty good, but you're aware that you're sitting in a theater watching community theater. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's phase two, right? There's little things about the, the execution that are getting in the way of the delivery of the interpretation. All right. And so phase two is where the bulk of the work is. All right. Okay, good. That's our first group of, of terms. Okay. Next term that I want us to address is something that I call fluid thought or spinning plates. So whatever term is more useful for you, run with that. Right. This means doing things in real time, multitasking in real time which is something that you're doing when you're performing, right? So as a musician, you are executing a melody and lyrics and maintaining your connection with the audience and your connection with yourself and the music and everything you can think of that has to happen while you're performing, you need to be doing them at the same time, right? That's a successful performance and where a lot of us lose that uh, one of these things within phase one or our pitch went flat or something like that we were focusing on something else and lost track of that other thing right so what we need to develop as artists that are working in real time is the bandwidth and the skill set to be able to check in with all these things that we're doing simultaneously without dropping any of them I really like driving as a metaphor for this because it's something that most of us do. And so when you're driving, you have to be able to look in the rear view mirror, rear view mirror without hitting something in front of you, right? That kind of multitasking, mm -hmm. yeah? And um, unlike driving where we go, just don't, just don't even text and drive, like for a musician, the best musicians can do all of the things at the same time. <laughs> and that's what kind of a skill set that we're working towards. Don't text and drive. That's don't do that. No. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's fluid thought spinning plates. OK, now the next thing is sympathetic listening. All right. This is the ability to listen to somebody else performing. Uh, again, this is my, my personal term for it, and I've got to, I'm trying to remember another one because I came up with another term for it recently that I think makes more sense, but it's not coming to me. So sympathetic listening. This is the ability to feel, visualize, imagine how 
another player is executing to inform your own approach. So when you're listening to somebody else that you think is fantastic, you get that feeling from watching someone else perform, you are able to put yourself in their body to feel what they're doing and to learn from that. All right, this is an awesome skill set to develop as a musician. All right, so you're not just listening and getting carried away, although you don't want to lose that ability either, which is something that a lot of musicians do. They start to just listen critically to everybody who's performing and kind of lose their ability to be in it. You don't want to lose that, all right? But you do want to develop this ability to hear what they're doing and appreciate that and see if you can apply it to what you are doing, okay? Um, inner voice. So I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of terms and then we'll find out where you guys want to break things down and apply them to yourselves, okay? So I'm going to keep going with these terms. Inner voice. When you are hearing somebody else's voice or somebody else's sound in your head when you're performing, right? then it's going to be impossible for you to be yourself, your best authentic self. So if you're doing karaoke and you're singing a Celine Dion song and you're, sing you're hearing Celine Dion in your head, you're going to end up inadvertently doing a bad impression of Celine Dion. You're going to have a very hard time doing a good impression of yourself. So eventually what you want to be doing is hearing your own voice, singing the song or playing the song the way that you think it should be done in your head, and you're playing or singing along with that. We'll get more into this in next week's workshop, which is about how to cover a song. This is the, the biggest skill set to develop and it involves getting clarity on what that voice sounds like in your head. All right, but just drop that out there for now. Over singing or over playing. This is context dependent, right? Doing anything more than you need to be doing to the extent that it negatively impacts you or the music. Right? People do this for all kinds of reasons because they feel like they have to prove themselves or show off or because they're nervous and they're trying to compensate for something. Usually you're trying to compensate for something. All right? Give the music just what it needs and nothing more. All right, yes, we've been asked for an example. We'll get back to that. Yeah? I was going to add another one to that, is excitement. Excitement. Yes, out of excitement. Yeah, overdoing things. Have you ever heard somebody performing something and you're just like taken out of it because they're just doing too much? Or they're singing too hard or just like it didn't need that. The music lost its impact because you did that. Right? So there's an element of self-control and awareness that's involved. Right? Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, all right, first do no harm <laughs> when you're performing, right? Um, especially with other people, all right? This just means work within your strengths and limitations, yeah? That doesn't mean not to work on being able to do more things in the practice room or in uh, rehearsal spaces and safe environments like that. But it, making it sound like we're in a city or something. Look at that. <laughs> There's a siren going on. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So um, there are spaces to work on being able to do getting to the next level comfortably. On stage is not that time. On stage is when you play it safe. Mm. All right. Um, what, what was the hitting you gave there? Huh? What was the hitting you gave there? Oh, first do no harm. Do no harm. Does that not depend on which genre you, genre you sing, you know, what, what you... Because no. sometimes spontaneity in music on stage, that's something... Yes. That if you, I mean, you must have that ability. So this is a question about spontaneity, and do you want... Yes, yeah. but you have to be reasonably sure that you're going to be able to execute so it. execute that, of course. Yeah. Right. So there's first do no harm in in 
in every context. And to be able to improvise like that is a skill set. And if you don't have it, I wouldn't throw it out in a live music setting. So I, you know, when, when I, I conduct the choir and I create the opportunity for people to try that, that's what that's for. And you create opportunities for yourself to try those things in safe spaces. But a performance, it's not going to be a safe space for you to do that. All right. Okay, cool. All right. That's all the terms I brought for today. Now let's do a little bit of unpacking. Who is feeling some kind of way about what? <laughs> yes. Um, I guess this probably might be a weird one, but I can't hear things in my head. I have uh -huh. to make the noise. Yeah. Um, to hear myself. Yeah. Um, where does that fall for inner voice? So, do you have an inner voice ever? Unless I'm consciously doing it, no. You don't have one unless you're consciously doing it. Okay, but you have one if you're consciously doing it. Okay. So you can. So my inner voice. Everybody's inner voice is different, right? Uh, when I say inner voice, I don't necessarily mean in songs or words. Like for me, um, my inner voice behaves terribly. Um, it, I. I like if someone asked me to picture a house, I can't picture one. It's not like a clear conceptual. Or if someone asks me to picture a melody, I can't necessarily hear exactly the melody in my head, but I have like reference points for it and I know knowing myself, I know when it's solid and when it's not if that makes sense. So when I say your inner voice, everybody's inner voice is here in here is different. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a functionality of being able to reference a, a, a functionality of reference points in your head that you can rely on. Right. But if that's not strong, you're going to end up like, again, singing the Celine Dion, doing a bad impression of Celine Dion. Yeah. She already exists. She's got that. <laughs> yeah. You do your version. You do you. Yeah. Um, again, getting into next week's workshop a little so, bit because I'm so excited for it. But so when you're talking about inner voice, mm -hmm. so you're if I'm going to think of something in my inner voice, I'm thinking in terms of my voice. Yes. Or someone else's. Yes. Mm -hmm. How I sound. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is a very tricky thing for people, often because um, a lot of us don't actually know how we sound. Are you coming next week? Next Wednesday? Yeah. 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 Okay. Because this is this is literally next Wednesday's yeah. workshop is how to develop this. So I, I don't. It was a really good question. It's a Sorry. great question. It's, yeah. It's, um, this question is about I hearing. I can hear lots if you're of melodies, hearing your own voice in your head. Sorry. No, continue. Yeah. Melodies, yes. If I yeah. think of a song, I hear the melody. Yeah. The eagle song, then it's it's there. Yeah. So you do have to so learn what your voice sounds like oh and how voice. to strengthen your connection with it in your own head. Mm. If you're a singer, right? But it's the same thing for if you're a guitarist or a pianist. You have to get your your touch, your mm. tone, the things that you're going for clear in your head. So do you hear your own voice? You said it was all over the... So the, the very, uh, you, I, I can. Can you, can you hear your own voice when you're not singing? Yeah, head? and it's like the difference between the voice that you hear in your in your head is not your voice, mm. right? The voice that you when you're listening to yourself talk, you're not actually hearing what everybody else hears. No. You're hearing yourself via bone conduction, yeah. right? And so that's more sonorous and lower pitched, and it's in your head. Whereas when it travels across the air. You've heard yourselves on recording? Yeah. How many of you hate the sound of your voice on recording? No. Yeah. No, not anymore. Most people. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's yeah. a good, yeah, that's, that's a good exactly song. it. Yeah. Is most people hate the sound of their voice on recording. And again, I will get into this next week. <laughs> but there's, there's reasons for that. And that's why it is such a confronting process to, to, to start to be able to actually hear your own voice. Mm. Okay. Putting that down for now. <laughs> Getting into into this stuff. There's there is so much overlap. You asked for an example of over singing. 
or yes. yeah, but, but overplay. Because you, you, you think of rock, I think of rock, I think of rock artists that suddenly, ah, yeah, 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 you know, and they make a whole, but that's actually, it, you know, when you think of these rock artists, how they... Uh, well, it sounds like it sounds like those artists that you're describing are doing a lot, but it serves the song. Yeah, it serves. So the you song. can do a lot. So it's over. That serves the song. I mean, over singing or over playing is just when you're singing. doing something that doesn't serve okay. the song. Well, example. Right. Okay. Let me see. I used this one earlier, I think. Watch the moment come alive in your hands And watch it slip away once again Here in the half-light you see yourself too clear Until the night comes on and finally you disappear. Okay, so that's appropriate, right? Absolutely. So let's try it. Watch the moment come alive in your hands and watch it slip away once again. I would consider that over singing for what the country, song needs. What country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes country, so it's to me that it's still it's it that still gives me something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you it does. Yes. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Let me do. Let me see if I can do a better job. People liked that. Is was what people was. Yeah, what I liked it. All right. Let me see. <laughs> we can see what you're saying. We still. I can see. Yeah. yeah. No, I'll try yeah, to do a. Like I'll try to do a better things. job of of doing that. Um. All the shouting, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was giving it more than it needed, in no my opinion. But yeah, so there is. Oh, I suppose this is a really good time to point out that this is subjective, mm -hmm. right? There are yeah. things that are objectively, yeah. objectively poorly done, I suppose, by most people, you know. Or uh, oh, there is. <laughs> There is a singer that went viral for these anthems that they sang in America, and we're in New Zealand, so people aren't going to know that. Uh, people aren't going to know that reference. Uh, but have you ever heard somebody sing? So, like, this is a thing in the states. It's a it's, it's a very contentious thing about people singing the national anthem and doing all kinds of stuff with it, right? Um, so, oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? Ah, that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. You didn't like that. Um, okay. We sort of copy that of each other as well. <laughs> yes. So you, that's not your own then. And I find, to me, that's over singing. Right. Sometimes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's over singing, it, over singing the, the, the can mean a lot of things. It's context dependent. Right, so it's it is subjective. There is subject subjectivity involved, and it is context dependent. Yeah, so um, over singing might be um, adding more notes, embellishments we call those than need to be there, or um, using an inappropriate placement, which is what I was trying to do with the first one. I was like, oh, I see this as a lullaby. So when I changed the vocal approach, it ceased to be a lullaby anymore. But it didn't really. It still sounded good. Sorry. St thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it became a bit of a thing that what you just mm. explained. It became a bit of a thing that oh, you know, and all that. I yeah. can't do it. But yeah, yeah, it became a, a singing special. like someone else is always going to sound like over singing, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not authentic to you, mm -hmm. so it's always going to sound. Something's always going to sound off about it. Mm -hmm. If you're copying someone else's embellishments, someone else's isms, those things are authentic for their voice. It's not authentic for your voice. And the things that go into your voice are the things we talked about in the first workshop or, or in the second workshop and now in this workshop, and we'll talk about it in the next one, <laughs> are you are a combination of your instrument, right? Your strengths and limitations, your influences. There's no other musician on the planet that has those same combinations of things, 
right? You're always going to sound like a second-rate Elvis Presley if you're trying to sing like Elvis Presley. But you can be a first-rate you if you whittle it down to what that is. Hmm? All right. Cool? Come at me. What else? What's bothering you guys about the terms or anything in your own practices? A lot of what we rehearse and um, bring to our team mm -hmm. is has come from a live uh, recording all right and so it's very difficult to remove yourself from all the ad libs or the, the one-liners that the artist is saying mm. in between lines right to then bring that uh, on a Sunday morning and to not have those things going around in your head yes thinking that you have to sing or say those things right because okay. that's how you've heard the original and learned it 10 times right okay i feel like i'm teaching next week <laughs> <laughs> it's fine it's fine we'll do it twice um so what you do so it, it's it's hard to take a song that you're doing that belongs to somebody else and not have certain things that they do kind of in your head um whittle down the song to its fundamentals take off all the stuff so let's go back to phases one through three all right what makes the song the song all right it's not that person's voice it's not that person's tone and vocal placement or the 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 uh, setting that they used on their instrument or their amplifier or anything like that right break the song down to its absolute basic components and then build it back up one of the things that I recommend doing is listening to that song done by a bunch of different people the more versions of it you can find the better because you're trying to dilute your idea that there's one way of doing this song. Hmm? Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So dilute that in your head. To, yeah, and take out so if you find one of the one of the big things, I'll just take it, one of the things that happens often is embellishments, right? So you hear um that's one of the defining features of artists is they tend to have like a go to things that they do with their voice. And then it's really obvious when someone else is mimicking them because they end up doing this go to and you're like, Hey, that's that person's thing. <laughs> you know? That's probably not your thing also. You know, because that's a very identifying feature of that of that person and things like that. If embellishments, everything, strip it out of the song, take it down to its basics, right? Just pitch, rhythm, what is necessary for the song, and then build it back up only with things that feel authentic to you. Hmm? So let's say you've got your own song and you've embellished it and you are happy. But it's, it's still not heading right. Like, how do you shift your perspective? So, you, like at the start, you're saying polishing a song. Like, mm. um, is I guess the root of the question is: Is there a way that you can give yourself a different perspective of your song? Is there a way to give yourself? So, this is a song you've written. Yeah. Okay. And you're happy with it. It's just not hitting the audience the way that you want it to or yeah and like how do you know if you've over embellished or over well, under that's that is subjective and it's your song so if you feel like that's right that's probably right some if someone else gives you a pin an opinion on that that is also subjective i, I was but, thinking more like maybe recording yourself and mm -hmm. listening back like kind of in, in that sense, like how to get a, a different. <laughs> how to get a different. Here's what I think is, here's an exercise that I think is great. It's called in the style of. So to kind of drive home the point of what I was just saying, um, try singing your song or any song you're working on in the style 
of someone else. All right? A couple things will happen there. All right? You will figure out it's kind of cartoony and, and all that kind of stuff. And you'll figure out what's clearly them, but you'll also figure out what's clearly not you when you do this. All right. So um, <laughs> we could do this as a as a group real quick. Let me. We're gonna do um, um, only fools Russian. Okay. So everyone's gonna sing. Or do does everybody know this song? <clears throat> Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can tell falling in love with you. Good. Now, everybody put on your best Elvis Presley voice. <laughs> We're going to do it all together. Yeah, I want you to all copy right. him. <laughs> all right, just that much of it, and we'll see what we got. Two, three, four. Wise men say only fools rush but I. Nicely done. <laughs> Good. Now, you've all just learned a bit about Elvis and a bit about yourselves, right? Oh that you probably hadn't thought about. Like, oh, Elvis holds his soft palate like this, and he does this stuff with his tongue, and this is how, his, how things happen when he's making that tongue, right? You know that that's not authentic to you, right? So what I recommend doing is uh, pick three artists that you know really well, the sound of their voice, their isms, things like that. You don't need to research it ahead of time, it's just in your bones because you listen to their music and you know this artist, right? Do their, so sing, sing a song, it doesn't have to be one of their songs, it's actually sometimes better if it's not. And so pick one song and do this one song all in the style of that artist. All right, so pick, do this one song all in the style of these three different artists, okay? Record yourself, listen back. Mm -hmm. You'll get a very good idea of what you know about those artists and now what you know about yourself. And so the fourth thing to do is to do it in the style of you, which you're narrowing down from what you're not. <laughs> Gives you a place to start. Cool. Yeah? Yeah? All right, polishing is a question that was brought up. So let's talk about that, okay? You've got, say you've got phase, so phase one is in order. Phase one has to be in order for things to, for you to polish anything, all right? Phases two, three, so I say phase one, two, three, but they're not exactly linear. It's just hard to work on phases two or three if you can't first sing the melody. Right, it's hard to work on interpretation. Your interpretation is not really gonna come through even if you have that connection to the text. If you're not supporting enough for the, or your, if your technique is not there for it to actually come out well, your, your interpretation is not gonna come across. Right, so that's why I kind of introduce them as one, two, three, but you could have a phase two uh, reason that your phase one is out, right? So say you're flat. It's not because you you're singing something and it comes out flat, right? It's and it's not because you don't know what the note is, right? That would be a phase one thing. If you didn't know what the note is actually, that would be a phase one issue, right? This what if it's just that you know what the note is but you just can't reach it? That's a phase mm -hmm. two issue. That's something you're doing physically that you're not executing. I can't get to that note. Okay, so there may things that reg be, there may be things that register as a phase one issue, but if you look at it deeper, it's somewhere else that that's not coming through, right? I think the most frustrating one is when people go, "I am feeling the song. I do know what I'm feeling, and it's not coming across." And it's because there's something in one and two that's preventing it from coming through. Most of us are coming to music with a strong sense of phase three, the why, and what we're trying to communicate.
All right. So that polish, what that is, that polished performance is when someone has the one and the two down on, on lock so that it can be all about phase three by the time that they're performing and they can be in that and they can be using their fluid thought to check on anything in one and two to make sure that that's still working, that's all still there, you know, but they're, the majority of their bandwidth by the time you're performing is in phase three. It's in being in the moment and in the emotion of, it, of, of whatever it is that you're trying to articulate. Hmm? So there's a lot of skills that are developed, a lot of time in the practice room to get yourself to a spit. So you can hear, I can hear, and you probably can hear even if you're not sure what you're hearing. You can hear when someone's thinking about their, their playing and not actually in the emotion of what they're playing, right? So let me see if I can do this. This is tricky for me because I'm very well practiced at like having all these things. So I, and I've got to like consciously let a ball drop, a uh, plate fall. Um, now I'm thinking of it as juggling. You guys are following, right? It's <laughs> juggling. It's plates. It's all right. So let's see. Mm. The water is wide. I can't cross over. And neither have I wings to fly. Build me a boat that can carry two, and both shall row, my love and I. Yes, no feeling. It's not technically wrong, no. right? It's not technically wrong. No. And it's not even just that there was no feeling. I was trying to let oh. specific oh. balls. Sorry. No, 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 that's the point. I was trying to let specific balls drop, but not the feeling one. But you see how when those other balls so. drop, yeah. everything else kind of goes to the wayside, right? Okay, so let me put it back in place. That was still boring. <laughs> It was boring. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. I, know you. I did it right. You, yeah. You can no. do that beautifully and yeah. give it away. Mm -hmm. This is a fun part of this workshop. You gotta give a song away. Yeah. All right. So here's an important thing about performing is being ready to perform in your body, in your everything. Your audience will forgive you for taking a second. In fact, it becomes a part of the performance. Okay, so want to see? I'm not warmed up. The water is wide I can't cross over and neither have I wings to fly. Build me a boat that can carry two, and both shall roll, my love and I. Something like that. Yeah. All right. So um, I was also adapting for this moment, right? So in this moment, I'm not warmed up. So this is what I mean by first do no harm. Okay. Not warmed up. So I was like, not going to do this in a higher key that I can usually access. Right. So I'm going to have to do it in a lower key. Um, I was like, oh, because I'm doing it in a lower key, I won't do it with all these really long sustained phrases. And so there's all these decisions that you make. And so I guess this leads me to another thing. Don't be hyper rigid with your arrangements and the way that you play them. You have to have some amount of give because it's never going to go 100%, right? So your favorite professional musicians that you see live, 
You might have seen them on their worst day. You would never know. Mm. Only they would know <laughs> that it was a bad day because their base level of performance is so high and their adaptability is so, so high. All right? Mm. So being able to adapt and be flexible, you, you want to have all of these ideas and yeah, flesh it out and stuff like that, but don't become rigid on it. Right, because it's never gonna go a hundred percent that never way. Yeah. yeah, never, never. Especially if you play every day. You yeah. Have to do it every day. Yeah. For that particular song, um, "The Water Is Wide," that is a good one for because I do different folk music stuff. Um, that's a good one for like a folk jam session because it's just uh, like a one, four, five, sometimes a six. It can be very simple and accessible for your average musician but then i usually if my voice is warmed up i like to do it in the key of f sharp which is not an accessible key for your average musician so i'll be like okay in this scenario in this setting i'm going to do it in the key of d and i'm going to do shorter phrases so that there's space for the uh for the other musicians to move around me and to doodle and to do things like that but if i'm say in a in a session that is like a um, uh, Kiernas Liberdal type thing, like an Irish session where it's just the singer singing solo. And my whole job is just to make the room stop. I'm gonna do it up here. The water is wide, I can't cross over. And make people lean in. So it depends on your setting and what you're trying to accomplish and all these things. Um, but you want to be able to be flexible and still polished. Hmm? Okay. Very cool. Um, well, hmm? Yeah. Ask me things. Just quickly. Yes, um, please do. One, two, and three. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about three interpretation and the feeling and all that. So you, are you sort of saying this isn't rigid, but sort of saying, if you got one and two right, three becomes a whole lot easier. Yes, yeah. At three is going to be impossible. So phase three, your interpretation is not gonna come across very well if one and two aren't there. And it's gonna come across in the same way, it, not in exactly the same way, because if you've got, but it's similar to that karaoke singer, right? You can tell that they've got passion and that's about it. <laughs> Have another beer. Yeah. Um, but the passion, it, it does become, it's harder to get it across when the, the other things aren't there. And also, because your, your audience is going to be distracted. Even if it's there, your audience is going to notice, oh, that was, pla you know. It's kind of like, have you ever heard someone singing and you weren't sure if they were, like they were headed to a high note and you knew they were headed to a high note and you were not convinced that they were going to make it? That is an uncomfortable feeling for you as a listener, yeah, yeah. right? You want your audience to be super comfortable listening with you. They have full faith that you're going to do whatever it is you're aiming for. Hmm? Yeah. Still, people like that perform. They're on stage. People, perform. people they perform. perform at all levels. Yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. it's a really, like, I'm not saying that people who don't have these things on lock shouldn't, shouldn't perform. perform. No, I'm that, just no. saying this is what's necessary to get to a, a yeah. polished yeah. Yeah. professional yeah. space. And the other question I was going to check out, Jim. Mm. Um, you're talking about uh, listening to your own voice, recording, listening to your own voice. Mm. So would you recommend, like I, I think Marina said, one of the other quiet leaders said, best way to hear your own voice in real time, like Anyway, get a couple of books. Oh yeah, in real time that can be very helpful. So hearing your voice in your own voice in real time. So um, you were saying that another music teacher suggested that you do this. Yeah, but the best thing to do is just to record yourself and listen back. That's going to be the most accurate thing because you're 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 not really going to be able to listen to yourself actively and everything you're doing in real time. You're keeping track of it, but you're not able to make objective judgments 
about what needs to change. And while we're talking about judgment, same thing that I said last time for these previous ones is in order to be able to listen to your own voice and to get make useful, you know, headway, you have to be able to listen to yourself and dismiss any unhelpful thoughts about that. Anything like, oh, my tone could be better, that's useful. We can work for that. I sound like shh, doesn't help. Not a helpful thought, you can't do anything with that. All right? So productive thoughts only. As the unproductive thoughts arise, you can just let them go until you get to one that's helpful. All right? And I find the phases of song development really, really helpful for being able to assign as something comes up. So you're listening to yourself and you're like, ah, my tone, I'm not liking it right now, right? That you can go, okay, that is a phase two thing. And to what is, we learned this, people who came to my vocal workshop, what is responsible for tone? Soft palate, very good. So that's a soft palate adjustment, all right? Nice. Well, yeah, nice. well done. Yeah, other people were like, I was here and I know it was a thing. <laughs> yes, a soft. So you could start to make these, like these actual, oh, I'm not a fan of my tone right now. Um, let's see what kind of adjustments I can make. We all played with our soft palette and changed our tone just now when we did the. <laughs> yeah. So you can do it. Yeah. Um, Good. Okay. And I think people, sh like you said, I didn't mean because I feel bad now. Because I no, you don't have to feel bad. I think people should perform too. Because yes. It's, they've got courage. Yes. You, it's, it's something about courage too. You can have everything, yeah. but you still have to be able to go onto the stage yeah. and do it. Yeah. Well, so while we're. Things. While we're talking about the benefits of singing, whether you reach this polished stage or not, what are they? Developing courage, confidence, confidence, confidence. Experience. experience. So you need to go on stage when you can yeah. live, because you need that experience. Yeah, sorry. A connection to yourself. Connection to yourself mm -hmm. when you're performing, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, you and just it, just in the practice room, you, you can get into yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A connection with others if you mm -hmm. have an audience, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Control. Control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're. It, it's a full body mm -hmm. thing, yeah. and yeah. so it's really great for your. This is why playing music is one of the like the number one recommended thing for developing brains for like so for youth people who are in mm -hmm. school like oh. kids in school. Yeah. If they're in music, studies show that they're more likely to be successful at everything yeah. else because mm -hmm. music involves rhythm, which is math. Mm -hmm. It involves, it's very physical, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's all the things, you know, and then if you've got teachers that are working with you on historical context and emotional regulation and all yeah. these things, they can all be woven in there. And so they're, they're it's just good for you in general and then it's you engage your your vagal nerve when you sing and so that is like your serotonin and all of your feel good emotions and um, we talked a lot last week about songwriting for emotional regulation and mm -hmm. connection and listening to music for that reason um, yeah it's just an all around good thing to do even if you're not performing at a at a certain level, but if you want to go towards performing at a certain level, these are the things that you need to start becoming aware of. Um, some things that come up often um, is uh, that, uh, so common mistakes, I'm just going to write these down. I already told you about over singing and stuff like that. Um, oh, sympathetic listening. You do that, yeah, that is another term that I brought up. You also used that in order to mimic, mm. right? That's what I'm talking about, is hearing somebody else and then putting it in your body and going, oh yeah, well, I have a blue, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, you can do that with music and listening to somebody else play and things like that. You know, as singing, listening to somebody else sing. Um, okay, common mistakes. We talked about over singing, over playing, um, not first doing no harm. Um, uh, other common mistakes are 
Um, that everything, once you start a song, everything in the song has rhythm, including the silences, including your breaths, right? All of that has rhythm. And a lot of times people are only focused on the actual sounds that they're making as opposed to like the rhythm of your hand when you're doing a strum pattern on guitar, right? It's there's your hand is doing a rhythm even in the times that it's silent, right? So you're going down, up, up. Your hand has to be doing a rhythm with that down as well. Down, up, up, down, up, up. There's got to be rhythm in, um, in your breath, right? So back to the water is wide. The water is wide, I can't cross over. And so there was a couple things in that, in that silence. There was an offset, and then there was a breath, right? This is just a phrasing thing in general. Mm -hmm. Offset is what happens when you come to the end of a phrase. If you don't have it, it starts too abrupt. So it sounds too abrupt. Mm -hmm. So for example... The water is wide, I can't cross over. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. The air went dead. Mm -hmm. There's no dead air in the song, right? Once you're in the song, mm -hmm. even the silence yes. has direction, it has meaning. Everything is moving you through the song is moving you on to the next thing, which should feel like it follows logically from the thing that came before, all right? It's like a good speech or a good, uh, it's the same skill set that's used in a good speech or a good a comedy, a stand-up comedy routine, right? Timing, there's, there's, there's intention to the silence and the, the you know, the past. So um, yeah, so common, common mistakes is not mastering the silences. Hmm? And you're thinking of the next thing, like you said, comedian. So you're thinking of the next thing you're going to be singing. Yeah. In a way, you're, you're constantly mm -hmm. looking forward. Yeah. So not mastering the silences. So, so the for example, yeah. in singing, here's mm -hmm. what's happening in the silences. Okay. Yeah. You're taking a breath, and you're breathing for what you're about to do, right? But you're also, it's the same thing as me thinking about what I'm going to say next. You can tell before I start talking that I'm thinking about what I'm going to say next, yes. that it's coming up and to and through me. It would be extremely abrupt if you didn't have that signal beforehand. That would be very unnerving, right? That's why um, robots, in a way, sound so stilted, because they don't have that, like, mm. so what if? <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's, there's that part of the breath. So in the breath, just coming to singing, cause that's what I do best. Um, in the breath, you're preparing for what you're about to sing. Um, so uh, taking in the amount of air that you're going to, that you need a recap from earlier. You only mm -hmm. take in the amount of air that you're going to use, mm -hmm. right? And you calculate it based on length, the length of the phrase and the width, the height of the phrase not consciously, this is just something you get a feeling for, right? But it's also, you're preparing your intention, right? So before I start singing. The water is white. It started before I started singing, right? And then it, at the end of a phrase, there's that offset, because if there's not, that's weird and abrupt, right? You've also, you've always got, I'm doing it right now. You've always got, do you hear that? <laughs> it's always there. It's weird if it's not. So it should be there in your music as well, right? Um, so there's your breath, there's your phrase, and there's your offset, and there's the preparation for the next. So your silences have to be well used. That's one mistake that people often make. They don't think about their silences. They don't, they don't use them. Body language thing. Yeah, it's a body. It is a body language thing. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's also just a functional thing, really. You know, I'm trying to communicate when I'm talking and doing the same things that I'm talking about right now. I'm not. You know. Um, yeah, it's it is a body language thing, but it's functional. You know. You're communicating. 
when you're singing. And that's where a lot of people get stuck, is they're no longer trying to communicate, they're just focusing on what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You should be communicating. And if you don't have the bandwidth to be communicating when you're singing or performing or playing anything, then you have to, you've got a ways to go working on your fluid thought to develop that bandwidth. What do you mean, sorry again, about offset? Offset, that's that like sort of that cushion at the end of a phrase that happens that keeps the air from going dead. I can't cross over. Do you hear how it doesn't just go, I can't cross over. If you let the air go dead, then the next thing feels like it comes out of the blue, like you have to I'm regain sorry. that momentum. like the well-placed fade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well-placed fade. Good. I like that. Good. Cool. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of any other common mistakes that people make that I can leave you with that are like polishing things. Because I know you wanted polishing. It's really de developing this ability to be confident in what you're doing so that you you have the bandwidth to be in the emotion. You can afford to be in the motion without all this other stuff potentially falling apart. And really take the moment to be like, that stuff's there, I'm in the emotion. And if something falls apart, being able to get write it and be back into the emotion like that. Hmm? Um, good. I think that's all the things that I have today. Do you, do, do you ever forget words when you sing? Do I ever forget words? Yeah. I, then what, what, yeah. I don't often forget words to songs I've written. Mm -hmm. I forget words to songs I haven't written all the time. I'm someone with a very, very bad memory, actually. Like, and so I have, I, I'm very used to using an app on my phone for that kind of stuff. On stage? On stage, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I get the, a very interesting comment from people. They go, oh, I usually hate it when people are reading lyrics on stage, but I don't mind it when you are. And um, and that leads to this belief that, which is a very ableist belief that people shouldn't be singing if they can't memorize the words. A lot of people can't memorize words no, for all kinds of reasons. That's fine. Um, it's, de it's developing that same skill set of being able to check in with all these things without dropping all the other things. That's all it is. You know? Yeah. So that's not a biggie. No, it's not a biggie. So you say, how do you remember the words? No, you don't. I don't. I have... I'm in nine bands. <laughs> I have I have more than 500 songs in my repertoire. I don't remember them. I don't remember a lot of them. I know them as soon as I have a little bit of a reference, but I often will give myself that reference. I don't need to be a jukebox. It's a, it's a visual reference. Yeah, it's a visual reference. Yeah, cool. context reference. It's a, star. it's a context reference, but it's the same thing as in your in your head, that inner voice I'm talking about. I'm not hearing it exactly. I have all these context references for, oh, right, I'm going to sing this, which means that my support needs to be here and my spacing is going to be here and all this, you know, that like, kind of stuff. Like a muscle memory trigger. Yes. Right. More like that. Hmm. Cool. All right. I know we did a lot of next week's <laughs> in this one. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'll think about that. I'll think about how I'll expand okay. next week's a little bit and, and stuff like that. But um, Just do it again. I've probably forgotten that. <laughs> yeah, I'll have forgotten already. Well, um, yeah, cool. If anybody has any other questions or follow-up or things, you know how to get a hold of me. Why did we get into next week? Was it because of, of our reactions? Yeah, it was your particular <laughs> things that you wanted to know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is fine, which is fine. Yeah, that's totally, it's all good. So have we missed anything from today? No, I, I, gave, I gave all of the terms up front and then just wanted you guys to lead it and you let it. So it was good, it was good, yeah. Um, cool, all right, I think that's us. So everyone give yourselves a big round of applause.
Thank you so much for coming. Yet another workshop. Uh, same time next week, same place. See you there. Thank you.